How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Voodoo Vince here, and I just had a pretty solid game. Well, I say solid game, but a pretty outstanding game. In World of Warships, 241,000 damage in a Yamato, which beats uh, my previous record of 195,000, uh, which there's a lot of folks that have made more than that. But for me, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. And I thought, well, I'll put this footage together and showcase what... It... Here's the video. I thought, well, you're not really learning anything from it. You know, a lot of people put up the videos where you do and all this kind of stuff, but they don't actually go, here's what I was doing, here's what I was thinking through the video. So that's what we're going to do today. So this was the stats from the end of the game. And uh, let's see here. What ended up happening was I uh, got the first 15 minutes of footage, had a small break between starting the new recording because I, I really need to set my shadow play to record 20 minutes but 15 minutes is usually long enough so i leave it set to that so zen Yamato, it's a good uh, tier 10 game a couple tier nines tossed in epicenter which is my absolute favorite and by favorite i mean i hate it to death and it's stupid but that's personal preference so anytime you're on the epicenter map obviously you've got to fight for this center control area and high tiers uh, definitely are a little bit of a change in style from lower tiers. Lower tiers you can get away with a lot less or a lot more stuff. You know, torpedoes aren't as long range, spot distances aren't quite the same, the battleships don't quite hit you for the same amount. It all kind of depends. It's uh, kind of what you've got laid out there. So for me, I've been spawned way down here in the south, and um, what I'm going to want to do is move over towards these islands over here. And when you're doing this, you're moving over here towards these flanks. Number one is you're stopping people from pushing down through there, which I ended up catching a Zao that was moving south, He's, which the Zao's have a high concealability. And he probably would have slipped down in here and gotten into this island without being detected had I not been moving that way. The other thing is that a lot of people want to start hiding behind islands right out of the gate. And as you move further and further out here, and if you can move up, you begin negating the cover behind these islands and force these boats to move out or move back. Either one of them throws them off and allows friends to, to make an engagement. So the game goes ahead and uh, gets started. And uh, our DDs immediately begin pushing into the caps, which is great. That's what they're supposed to be doing. And it seems like they're just going to let us cap it. So what I go ahead and do is I'm going to head this way, knowing that at some point either I'm going to be able to shoot between these islands or hook around this and move north and begin to negate a lot of this cover. Because not only can I shoot here, but I can also shoot way over here. I, I've negated all this cover. And I'm going to do one of two things. One, I'm going to draw fire, which is going to allow this, this side of the team to not take fire and push up. Or they're going to continue to focus on whoever they're shooting at and allow me free shots. One way or the other, I win. Either I'm going to win the game or I'm going to win in damage. So as we continue to push over here, we really don't have a lot of support. I begin to get worried about a destroyer. But as you can see, my detectability is 17.5, and I'm not currently detected. So that means that there's not a DD anywhere within this area. So, as we start to push up, a Des Moines, I believe, gets spotted here. He does. And as you can see, oh, Hindenburg, excuse me. If you were to push up to this island, he'd be in a real good spot here. He could shoot over this island here that's in front of him and some of these edges, but you really can't hit him. So, with me being this far south and moving out east, I can get rounds over this and actually shoot at him. So, what I'm doing right there is I'm actually spotting to kind of see where he's at in relation to the islands. And looking here, kind of put my spot indicator there. I'm going to try and put some rounds and arc them over that island. I think I get like a ricochet or something. I don't think I actually land any, any rounds on him. Yeah, one, one pin for 4,800, which is not bad. So, all of a sudden, there's a Gabarovsk, which is kind of what I was worried about. He was probably in these islands and couldn't see me, but I couldn't see him either. And all of a sudden there's a Zao as well. So I go ahead and put my auto-targeting on the cab just in case he decides to, to push me. He seems to turn away. He doesn't want to fight, which is good for me. 
uh, and now all of a sudden I've spotted this Zhao. So the same thing that I'm doing, this Zhao is doing. He's pushed here and he has line of fire on all these guys if I allow him to do so. So I could continue to try to focus on this Hindenburg, but the Hindenburg, he can't shoot directly this way and he can't shoot directly this way. So really and truly most of these guys are safe through here, but they're not safe from this guy. And if I wasn't here, this battleship will be fighting this DD on this corner. But now if this DD spots, uh, the battleship spots this destroyer, I can also see him. And now here's the Zhao. If I allow the Zhao to get into this island where he can arc shells over and no one can get to him and he has long range torps and the Kabarov's here, it's just a bad situation. So by me moving this way, I'm negating all of that. So my current focus now is to get my nose back towards the Zhao and turn away from any battleships that may be up here. I haven't seen any. There's one here. But if there are any up here that can then make broadside shots on me, I want to make sure that doesn't happen. So what I want to do is, is kind of turn angle away from any ships that might be up here in this area and bring all three guns to bear on the Zhao. So we put a good hit on the Zhao, 10,000 and then 12,000. Six penetrations and one overpin, which is great. And then all of a sudden, there's two battleships. Boom, boom. So with this angle, we should be able to ricochet a little bit. But you've got a... The Gross and the Yamato. So we want to go ahead and get that, that good angle where if they do shoot at us, we're not going to take as much damage as possible. So at this point, the Zhao is kind of in a spot where I can't really shoot at him. So I go ahead and I think I put a salvo at the, the Degrade. And I'm waiting for the Zhao to pop back up. Now, one of the things with the Zhao is he has long-range torps. So I know that he's fired some torps at some point or another, either back side of this island before I was spotted or front side of this island as I was spotted. Because that's what I would do. So what I want to do is now turn back into these battleships. And I want to play where I'm on the other side of this island, where I can at least detect this guy, and I'm not going to take these torps. In a straight gunfight, I should be able to win against the Zhao. Maybe not a combined effort of the battleships and the Zhao, but one-on-one -on -one with the Zhao, just guns for guns. If we're both in the open, I should be able to kill him before he'll kill me, just because the alpha damage I can deliver. Even with his rate of fire. Full health to not so full health. So he actually pushes the corner. And as we can see down here, kind of in the uh, deal, if he launches torps, line of sight from me to him is right here. So as I turn, I want to put this island between me and him and put shells at him because I can still shoot over this small bit of island here. So I'm going to go ahead and continue my turn. What I want to do is turn into the battleships. The Zhao, a lot of times Zhao's won't shoot AP at you. I mean, I would if I got a broadside, but the HE is where it's at. It, it does a lot of work for you. So what I did is I kind of backed off on my speed. I had two fires going, so I went ahead and did my repair or my uh, damage control. And then what I want to do is nose into this island here. Because what he's trying to do is the same thing I'm trying to do, which is get this angle on me. As he moves further and further out to the right, south, he can then put torpedoes in towards me. But then he stops and he turns back into me. So he probably launched his torps. And then he began to turn into me. Which was fine. So if he's nose on to me, as long as his uh, he's not shooting AP, there's not really a whole lot he could do. And as I continue to move away from him in this direction, I'm going to continue to evade torpedo launches that he can effectively do because I'm I'm going to outrun them as long as I don't stop here. My spotter plane is down, so I would just have to spot them manually. Got two fires going on, taking a good deal of damage, but. You know, he's at 7,000 HP. Those rounds were short. He'd slowed down a little bit. And there's the torpedoes. Well behind, which is good. But he fired those way back. So at this point, uh, a friendly Des Moines arcs some shells in and takes him out, which was good. I was happy about that. The less damage I take, the better. And I knocked a lot of meat off of him already. So now what we have is we have these two battleships which probably thought I was going to be dealt with by the Zhao and 
now I'm free and clear. So now I have broadsides on both these ships. The cabra officer is still up here. Essentially, you can't be up here without me shooting at you. And I'm still three quarters health. And my fire's out now. So I begin to turn guns for the Yamato. I've got good broadsides on him, and I want to get those shells out as quickly as possible. So I turn, 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 turn. I notice his guns aren't pointing at me. He disappears. I'm like, ah, okay, come on. I notice he's not moving very quickly, so I kind of throw just a snapshot lead on him and make a, a shot out there. I continue my turn, and all of a sudden, boom, two citadels on the Yamato, which is outstanding, especially for the dispersion you normally get. And then I notice a lot of meat. The Wooster, um, the Degros is still up there. There's a lot of stuff up there I don't want to have to fight. And I'm kind of on my own. I've got two cruisers here, but I don't, who knows how much work they're really doing. So we go ahead and throw a lead on the Wooster. And I go ahead and start moving away because I want to use some of my repair parties. Since I took some a lot of fire damage, I should be able to repair a lot of that. There's another 4,000 damage hit. So we're going to kind of allow the Zao and the, the other cruiser kind of take some of this punishment. Move out of range. Because if I stay there, that's almost everybody. And with my team all stacked up here in the center, not really doing anything because they've limited all their fields of fire, I'm going to go down. And if I go down, I'm not helping the team. So I continue to move away from them. Making shots here at the Yamato. A little elevation and a little lead. I think at this point I notice that this side is completely open and here is a cruiser. I notice it here shortly. As you can see, the fire's pretty much stopped. I'm waiting on my repair party to kick back in. And I, at some point I end up noticing this cruiser is pushing this corner over here. And nobody's really stopping him. Put some shells at the gross, and here's the Kronstadt. So I'm like, well, I can't allow this Kronstadt to come down here and, and push this corner. And my dudes are all still piled up right here. And this what's ultimately leads to a loss is the enemy team is moving, and my team is not. They're not really moving around like they need to. So what I do is I go ahead and push over here towards the Kronstadt. I wanted to kind of see also what it was capable of. I hadn't fought one in, in this kind of setting before. I, I think I've shot at some at max range, but I've never fought at any like this, so I kind of want to see what they're made of. Also, I was considering getting one, and after this, I don't think I will, because I'm a battleship guy, not a cruiser. But uh, anyway, so what I'm doing is kind of waiting on my repair party to fix before I do any shooting, and looking and kind of seeing what's going on. So at this point, the the gearing and the Kronstadt are, are very serious problems. So I try to help my, my fellow gearing out. The gearing, the enemy speeds up, outruns all my shells, and, and does nothing. And we lose our gearing as well. He just pushed too far up and he, he just he didn't make it. So now at this point I could go ahead and go, okay, the gearing's going to come attack me, flip around and run off, but that's not what I do. So I'm like, I got to get rid of this Kronstadt because if I leave him here, he's going to push this corner and he's going to end up tearing up everybody. So, here is some pretty good shot prediction. It's something that you can do. So, I zoom in. I notice he's turning. But these torpedoes are here. So, he can only turn in. He can't rotate all the way around. That means in order to dodge these torps, he's going to turn into them. And he's going to be right along through here, avoiding this line of torpedoes. So... He's also not moving as fast as he possibly can. So this is a, a shot prediction in not only where he's going to be, but he's also in the middle of a turn here. So this is a pretty quick little snapshot. So what I want to showcase is, so he disappears. I make a shot prediction based on what I believe his relative speed is and the fact that he can't maneuver left or right because of the torpedoes. I think he drives between these two torps. And he promptly disappears. I was like, okay, cool, I'll put some rounds out there. As I'm watching, boom, another Citadel, 17,000. And he's broadside to me. So at this point, I'm detected, but no one's shooting at me for whatever reason. 
So now I'm targeted again. Don't know if it's gearing or this guy. I believe it's the gearing at this point. And he's still cruising along, straight and level. So I put my marker right where it needs to be. He begins to turn away. And he takes two more citadels for 37,000. So then I ask for assistance because we need to get rid of this guy because if you let him limp away, he's going to come back with a lot of health and end up messing you up. Someone shoots at me, puts a couple rounds on me for a pretty good amount of damage, but doesn't kill me. You know, doesn't tear me up too bad. Get another good salvo, get a good kill. So now what we've done is we've secured this side. The cab are off, uh, or the gearing is fighting inside the cap, and these guys are still just stacked up hiding behind these islands for whatever reason, which again ends up losing us the game. Just because they're they're just not using the cover effectively. When you're right up on the islands, you're really robbing yourself of a lot of stuff. The destroyers can sneak up on you. They can radar. You know, all that kind of stuff. It does you no good because you can't. It's not a tank. You can't just drive forward and back up. You've got to, like, put it, you know, full back and then slowly back up and then move forward. It's just, it's not a good deal. Sitting off of an island using an island is one thing. But if you're not a DD or a, a really good cruiser... You're wasting your time parked right up on the front end of an island, just not doing any good. Not saying that you never will do that, but for the most part, it's not a very good tactic. So, what I go ahead and do is, since there doesn't seem to be anything over here, and I don't want to fight the gearing on my own, which is normally what I would like to do, but I don't want to, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn away. So I notice that my Yamato friend is back again. I go ahead and put a... a couple salvos out there he shoots over and I go ahead and continue my turn because he just fired and we get a couple ricochets and a non-pin so I go ahead and continue my turn for two reasons number one is that the Yamato had fired and two is the gearing is over there just on the other side of the island uh, gearing I think he's got about 10k torps or probably a little bit further um, I don't have my mods on anymore and I don't know exactly what the gearing has but I didn't want to find out either all of a sudden Sneaky Montana crashed into an island over there, probably being driven by a four-year-old, fires at me. So, I don't want to mess with him. The De Gross is moving across the cap zone, so I'll go ahead and put a couple salvos at him. And essentially, I'm moving back over here, back to where I kind of was, where I have some shots and stuff. Again, all these guys are piled up in this tight, tight area making these shots and stuff, and it's just not, it's not working very well for us. Gearing keeps popping in and out. I wanted to get some shells at him, but I just I couldn't. So currently what I'm kind of hunting for is uh, something to shoot at viable. So I'm waiting on this Yamato to pop back up again. And all of a sudden a Hindenburg pops up with him. Well, the Hindenburg's great and all, but I want to get rid of that Yamato. Uh, a cruiser can fight another cruiser effectively, but if that battleship gets a lucky hit and it gets a Citadel... He's going to off my cruiser, so I, I want to get rid of the cruisers. I mean the, the battleship first. And he's lower health. I don't want him to rep. So I continue to focus on the Yamato. I think I start to shoot at the Hindenburg, and then I, I focus on the Yamato. Primarily because the Hindenburg was in the open and the Yamato wasn't. So I get good shot prediction and another good hit on him for 8,000. At this point, I was transitioning targets. There's some smoke going on. The Hindenburg's focusing on me. I fire, and all of a sudden, the Yamato pops back up again. But I had slowed as I started to turn away, so the, uh, the enemy Yamato missed. So at this point, we got the Yamato down to 20,000. The Hindenburg's down to 12,000. But the Hindenburg's kind of a squirrely shot right now. The Yamato's a lot easier shot. I think I put a burst at them. No. So the Yamato has gone ahead and stopped when he's trying to reverse. Because he knows if he keeps pushing, he's going to get burned out by the cruisers to the south of him. So I go ahead and put a burst at him and uh, turn away. He's down to 9,000. So I go ahead and mark him. Because the cruiser was shooting at the Hindenburg instead of the Yamato. I guess just because he thought I was going to kill him outright. 
So I get somebody starts shooting at him, but he's backing up, so they miss. So I put out another salvo, and I think this ends up uh, it ends up killing him. So I'm at 185, and that's the, the end of this clip. I knew I was getting close because the the recording's only 15 minutes long. Well, for the shadow play, and so I knew I needed to start the other recording before I lost any footage. So we transition over to the other footage. I had killed the Yamato, jumped to 191,000, and I turned inbound and was moving towards the cap because we're down to, you know, five minutes, and we're at 464 versus 642, and we're pretty much even in chips. So I began to move towards the cap zone because, obviously, the, no one was going to attack. So a guy calls for a move in. I give a Wilco call. And we continue to, we start to push. We've got a Wooster, he's hiding behind islands. I don't have line of sight on him. There's a DeGrosse. Kind of slow rolling. Got all three guns learned, turned, and put a salvo out. Mark the cab. Put a round in on the uh, DeGrosse. And what I'm wanting to do is is not only get in the cap circle, but I also want to start pushing up to negate that Wooster's position. Now I thought that the Des Moines was going to go ahead and push up there. Then all of a sudden a freaking full health Kerfer shows up. I don't know where he'd been the whole map. He also had the Montana that was in the back as well. Um, so I'm like, oh great. And it's at this point I finally noticed that I just beat my previous record of 195,000. I was like, oh man, hellacious. I just, you know, 195,000 damage. Put a salvo at the curve first. I think I just get some, yeah, standard stuff to 2,700. So the Des Moines is up there fighting with the, uh, the Wooster. And I thought he was going to go ahead and push in. And then for whatever reason, he turns around and leaves. Just... He flips all the way around and, and drives away. I was like, okay. So, got some torts in the cab. Luckily, none of them hurt us. And this is one of the few points where you kind of go, okay, well, I can, I can turn away and save myself and lose the game, or I can go ahead and push in and see if I can turn this around. Because if we could kill everybody... Then we could win. And if we could stop points as well, then that's another thing because they're constantly gaining points too. But you're also down to two minutes. So I was like, you know, fuck it. In it to win it. So why the Des Moines left, I don't know. If he had pushed up while I pushed this direction, we could have killed this guy fairly easily. And uh, I end up killing him. Primarily just because he cruised out there like an idiot. So here's the curve first. He's, they're only just now seeing me. I wait till all my guns clear the island. And put out a burst. He also shoots at me. I go ahead and slow. I do take some pretty good damage. I said pretty good. I, I took some damage. But the curve first took worse. The Wooster pushes the corner and then just coasts slowly to a stop. Which was wonderful. I was like, dude, you, you've messed up so bad. You don't even know. Right there. Boom, boom. And two Citadels. No, one Citadel. Gone game over. So it's at this point I'm, I have the initiative. I'm going to go ahead and push 569 643. I assumed that I would have backup. I called for everyone to get into the cap because they're not doing any good outside the cap zone. And to go ahead and push the curve first. And I'm like, I need to do as much damage as I can to the curve first. All of a sudden, cab torps. I know I'm going to take uh, one, take it, flooding, because I'd been set on fire. I'd put it out. Didn't think about the cab. Knew I'm going down, so now it's about dealing as much damage as I can to this girl first to, to give everyone else a chance to kill him. Put another salvo out. And it's at this point that I want to point out that this cruiser can put some shells in here. This battleship is nose on. This guy is useless. He can't hit anybody. 
this guy can kind of put some shells out here, and this guy, I think, is shooting at him. There's also the cabin here. And I've got, I think, a, a Des Moines, a Wooster, and a couple other boats that have radar. And why they didn't push in and try to get rid of this guy. There's a whole lot of who did what or, and what happened. But had the Wooster actually pushed around this corner and maybe radared, he probably could have got rid of the cab. If he'd gotten rid of the cab, I wouldn't have probably taken a torpedo hit. Maybe. And I could have worked on this curve first. We could have done it all together. But you were down to 53 seconds. So, my deal is put as many rounds as I can into the curve first before I go down. Finally, get a high caliber. Which is pretty phenomenal at this tier for 241,000 damage. And, uh... Anyway, so these guys press on here. So they, they focus the curve first and finally get rid of him. But at this point, you've got 23 seconds to kill full health Montana, and you don't know where the cab Marovsk is. Des Moines, Zhao, Conqueror, he was he was fighting in there doing some pretty serious work. But then you had the two cruisers that were in the back and just ended up tossing it because of non-aggressiveness. You just weren't aggressive enough to actually perform the task. And not the you know, map awareness. Long story short, there was a lot of stuff that... Um, that I'm sure that the team did. Um, but I think that I played a pretty effective game overall, especially moving from one side to another. And I think that for Battleship players, that's something that you have to think about too, is sometimes you have to leave a side and go to another side and prop it up a little bit and then go back to your side. And especially if you're in a faster post like a Montana or, I mean, the Yamato's fast. I mean, you're talking 20 some odd nuts, uh, 27, 29. Pretty quick. But if you're in a North Cal or an Alabama, Massachusetts, Missouri, you're in one of these fast battleships, you know, you can move to another side, engage people, and go back to your side again. Especially if it turns into, a, like, uh, you get up there and there's a bunch of cruisers, and you have cruisers on your side, and it turns into a kite. You just leave the area, get out of range, let them focus on the other cruisers, go over to the other side, mark a couple of their battleships, or maybe... Uh, discourage their cruisers from pushing up with their battleships and kind of help prop up a side and then turn and leave and go back to the other side and by that point sometimes if your guys are kiting away to the, say to the south and the enemy's attacking from the north moving south then you'll have broadsides on those guys and then you can turn that flank again so I mean it's it's all about moving and thinking and predicting and angles and, and you got to be thinking about that stuff as you're doing it before the game starts as the game's going and as the game's coming to a close and don't quit till the end I mean, don't don't stop playing until the actual game ends. And, you know, you'll get some pretty solid games like that. And this was uh, primarily the Citadels. That's what got me. A lot of people were doing dumb things where I could see them. And my shots made it to where they were. And Orange Jesus smiled on me and let me do what I needed to do. Anyway, that's it, guys. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, I'll catch you all next time.